So I just finished a wonderful lunch here in the woods, a true Nova Scotia classic, hodgepodge. If you're interested in finding what hodgepodge was, I'll put a link up in the corner to that video. But now I've got to follow it up with something equally as good, which is another Nova Scotia classic, blueberry grunt. If you're interested in seeing what blueberry grunt looks and tastes like, keep watching. So blueberry grunt is just another one of those simple meals that was created here in Nova Scotia that anyone can make anywhere in the world with very simple ingredients. Basically, it's blueberries, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of flour created into a dumpling, and that's it. And I'll, tell you, I'll give you the process for making that in a minute. But first, I've got to get out and find some blueberries. All right, so I found a patch of wild Nova Scotia blueberries. Not a lot right here, but uh, I've got a few in my bucket already that I, or my, not a bucket, my container that I'm trying to get not filled. I don't need it filled. I only want, for this, I only need one cup. So this should top it off what I have here. I'll grab a few and uh, actually, why don't I do that first? I'll show you what it is that I'm picking up close. Let me put my container down so I don't spill any. So blueberries start to emerge early in the spring as small white flowers, lantern shape, bell shape, vase shape. What I'll do is I'll just put a picture up in the corner of what little flowers look like. And they will eventually die off to form small green berries like this. And if you look closely at the green berry, you're going to see that it looks like a little crown. Now let me just toss the green berry and bring up a blue one. So those green berries eventually grow a little larger. They have a nice reddish purple bluish color to them and then they come to this phase and that's just when they're ready for picking. And again there's that little bit of a crown you can see that's called a calyx and that little bit of a crown is the remnants of the flower bud. So uh, I'm just picking out the green ones. Don't save the green ones. Uh, you, you can eat the purplish ones but they're a little bit hard. Ideally you're going to save the blue ones. Okay where's my container? So I'll work here for a few minutes, picking the berries, and then we'll be ready to make the dessert. So the plant itself is a small, low-growing shrub. The ones I'm picking off right now are actually taller than average. You might see them 8, 10 inches off of the ground where they're more exposed to the sun. But here I'm in a little bit of a shaded area in the woods, and as a result the bushes have to rise up a little bit to gain or to compete for the sunshine. So these ones are running about 18, 20 inches tall. You usually don't see them much larger than that. Maybe two feet, rarely three feet, but they're a low growing shrub or bush. They have a woody stem, small green leaves on them. And there's really nothing you can confuse them for that's going to be dangerous to you, at least that I'm aware of. The one other plant in the woods here that looks anything like them is the huckleberry. And the leaves are very similar in shape, just a little larger, and they grow a little taller. And they produce a berry which turns black. And if you made the mistake and picked a huckleberry, congratulations, that's another tasty, edible, wild berry. But today this is all about blueberries. All right, so like I said, I'll pick some more blueberries here. It's not a large patch, but there's enough, I think, here to top off my container so that I'll have enough for dessert. All right, I've got my blueberries. It took a little longer than I expected. I had to go to a couple of spots because uh, they're quite spaced out around here in the woods. But I've got enough blueberries now. All I, all I needed for this dessert for myself was just about one cup. So I've got a little bit more than a cup picked. If I was making a full dessert for a couple of people, I would pick about four cups, maybe a little bit more. And then I would, you know, proportion the amount of other ingredients that need to go in it. And, and as I mentioned, I'm going to put all the recipes for blueberry grunt in the show notes below. But basically, it's just blueberries, sugar and dumplings that go on top of that. Very, very simple recipe. Now, just a little bit on blueberries. Why blueberry grunt? Why the name to start with? What is a blueberry grunt? Well, I understand from legend that the word grunt was added because the way the blueberries were cooked, they're basically stewed blueberries. You do them in a pot and the older pots, my mother had one, were very heavy. And as the blueberries simmered in their own juices, they would occasionally lift the cover off with a little bit of lift and that would make a 
grunting noise, hence the name blueberry grunt. Now, there are a couple of variations. The way I'm going to do it in the woods is not necessarily the way my mother would do it when I was young, but it's very, very similar, and I think it's probably equally as good, we'll say. Okay, so let me go down to my spot where I'm preparing the meal, and we'll get to making some blueberry grunt. Okay, hopefully you can see me well enough here in my spot next to my fireplace. Uh, it's starting to get uh, mid-late afternoon, I guess, right now, and the shade is coming through the trees, so I'm getting this really dappled coloring to the ground below. But, uh, yeah, I'll sh make sure that you can see everything that I'm doing. So, I, as I was using in the previous video where I made the hodgepodge, I have my Bush Bushcraft Essentials Bush Box LF set up in the fireplace here using charcoal because, once again, we're under a fire ban here in Nova Scotia due to the lack of rain. But charcoal is permitted, so that's what I'm using today. And you know charcoal, other than the fact that you have to carry it into the woods, it is a great uh, material fuel for cooking on because it provides a, quite an intense heat, quite even, very little smoke, uh, nice and clean and safe. You know, it's long go, long lasting. Anyway, all, all that aside, let's see. Let's get our dessert started. So again, simple. I have a small pot here. This is my uh, 1.2, Camelwell 1.2 liter pot. So that will be what I'm going to use today. I have blueberries that I collected here in the woods. These are the wild Nova Scotia blueberries. We'll talk more about them in a second. I went through them as best I could to make sure there weren't any green ones left. Now, I'm using... Oh, I did miss a green one. Oh, well. I'll find them sooner or later. So they're in the bottom of my pot. Now, I have one cup of blueberries, and I am going to use a little bit of water. In this case, about an eighth of a cup of water. Not very much, and the only reason I'm using that is to give it a little bit of liquid to get started as they start to simmer. If I was using frozen blueberries at home, which, you know, we do this quite often when we make blueberry grunt, then you can forego the water because as the berries defrost, they have enough juice that they're not going to stick to the bottom of the pot over the heat. So there is my one cup of blueberries, my eighth of a cup of, of uh, water, just a little bit of water, quarter cup of sugar. Just regular granulated sugar. Yes, it's a little sweet, but this is dessert, right? Quarter cup of sugar. I'm adding just a little bit. I'm going to put all the ingredients and the amounts in the show notes below. This is cinnamon. I think it's an eighth of a teaspoon. It could be a little bit more, but again, it'll be in the show notes. And this is lemon juice. Now, the cinnamon and the lemon juice are just extras. There's not really a necessity to use either of these. They just add a little flavor. The blueberries in themselves are a little bit tart and a little bit uh, sweet at the same time. So this kind of balance things out. And now all I'm doing here is mixing the sugar and the blueberries together. I'm going to get these on the heat right away because I'm going to want them to simmer for about 10 or 15 minutes before I add the next ingredient. So let me put that right on the heat and we'll continue talking. It's going to be a minute or two before that even comes up to simmering phase. So, here's my secret ingredient. This makes life easy. This is the Betty Crocker Bisquicks, the package of instant tea biscuit mix. And I could have easily used any one of my Bannock recipes or just plain flour dumplings. So that's one of the variations. My mother, when I was growing up, what she would do is put all the blueberries in a pot, put the sugar in, bring it to a simmer, and she'd just make up a flour and water, probably a little bit of salt a mixture, and make some very wet dumplings from that and drop them in on top of the blueberries, which is what I'm going to be doing. The alternative is to use something like a tea biscuit mix because it has a little bit of baking powder inside that'll help the biscuits become, or the the dumplings become a little lighter. So what I'll be doing as those come to a simmer and start simmering, I'm going to be turning this into biscuits. And what I'll do now is I will start working on the biscuits. Well, it's not actually biscuits, they're dumplings, sorry. I'll show myself doing that and then adding it to the blueberries when it becomes time. Okay, you know, I've said this before, but uh, cooking with charcoal, it always surprises me just how quickly it'll start to uh, bring things to a boil. So my berries, it's only been a couple of minutes, my berries are already simmering away. Ten, five to ten minutes is all they need, so I have to hurry and make my biscuits. So I'll open the package of biscuit dough up. So I'm obviously not going to use the whole package. There's way too much here. Maybe a third of the package. I don't think I'll use half. Uh, how much? Well, I'm putting in about, how much did I put in there? A little over a cup of water. And I'm just going to start adding biscuit mixture to this until it gets to a point that I think it's uh, 
the right thickness. So not like a bannock and not like a regular tea biscuit. This is going to be a little looser. I'm going to drop that. A little uh, wetter, if you will, you know, a little sticky to the hands. I think I've added more than enough water, maybe even too much. I may end up using more of this biscuit dough than I planned on it. Well, that's all right. I'll just make some biscuits with what's left over. Yeah, but you don't have it. You're, when you go to add these to the blueberries, it's uh, going to be dropped in by the spoonful. So you don't have to have a really easy to handle to dry a biscuit. A, a nice wet biscuit or dumpling is what more what it is is what you're after. So. Yeah, this is going to take a bit of time, I think. Adding enough. I'll tell you, sometimes it's easier to start with less water. Not sometimes, it is easier. It's always better to start with less water than, you th than you're likely going to end up using. Because it's, uh, you can always add more water, but it's hard to take it out once you get going. All right, what I'll do, because this is going to take a few minutes to mix through, is I'll continue to work on this off camera. And when I've got to the dough to a point that they're in the dumpling phase, then I will bring it back. Look, smell those blueberries. I don't want those to burn dry either. So I'll have to move in quickly here, creating a mess, of course. All right, bring it back in a minute. Okay, in an attempt to give you a bit of a different angle to show you what it is that I'm doing, I've uh, got the camera positioned so you can see hopefully straight down into the pot. So the berries have been stewing away here for quite a while. Not too long, they still look good. Oh yeah, they look fine. My biscuit, as you can see, it's, it's still quite a wet biscuit and I'm not going to use all of this. This is a bit too much. But, I'm just dropping it in. And maybe I'll use it all. There's room in there, I guess. Get out there. All of this is just a dumpling. There. Gonna be a little bit of work to clean this up. You know, that's it. Now I just wait 15 minutes. I don't take the cover off. I just let the heat cause the dumplings to rise. And when they're fully cooked in about 15 minutes, and I'll know that, they'll still look damp. They're not going to look like a biscuit with a golden brown top or anything. Everything is ready. That's all there is to it. They just simmer away for the next 15 minutes and then it's good. So when they are ready to eat, I'll come back and share the dessert with you. Okay, we are ready. Been 15 minutes. This is going to be hot. I'll need a glove for this. The smell is nothing short of amazing. So I'm trying a little bit of a different camera angle. Hopefully that you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Okay, so one little word of caution. This is extremely hot. I mean hot to the point of it will just scald your skin and uh, it also stains. <laughs> this will stain your clothing and anything else it gets onto. Blueberries are almost like a permanent stain. Okay my biscuits are much bigger than I needed it to be. Oh my goodness. Ooh, look at that. I'll give you a close-up don't worry. Yeah, I've got more biscuits than I'm going to... This is a big dessert. And despite my best effort, some of it did stick on the bottom. That's all right. That'll clean out. But I got most of it in there. Good. Okay. That is blueberry grunt. Basically, dumplings in stewed blueberries. A little bit of sugar. A lot of goodness and taste. All right, let me just reposition the camera. We'll give it a little bit of a taste test. And I'll talk to you a second about blueberries. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, just a word here. My ratio of uh, dumplings to blueberries is a little off. I've got a bit more dumplings than I need for the amount of blueberries. And uh, yeah, some of my blueberries did stick in the bottom of the pot. Just a very thin coating. It's not like I wasted them or burnt them. They just got stuck because of the intensity of the heat. So uh, just a word there. You might want to st uh, stir them once in a while while you're cooking them, especially when they're first starting out before the berries lose their juice, is to stir them to keep them from sticking to the bottom. Something I normally do, something I failed to do today, trying to get everything else done so that I could film this. 
But those excuses aside, what does it taste like? Because that is what this is all about. So what you do is grab a little bit of the blueberries, which are very thick at this point, a little bit of the dumpling. Enjoy the smell. Mm. And savor the flavor. Okay, you know, despite those errors, the way that I cooked it this time, this may be one of the best ones I've ever made. Wow. Of course, the berries couldn't get any fresher, could they? I mean, I just picked them this m today. That's hot, though. Okay, blueberries. So blueberries are a nat or naturally growing fruit here in Nova Scotia. Uh, so much so that Nova Scotia is the world's leader in exports of wild blueberries. It's something that we're quite famous for. Uh, blueberries have been uh, turned into a lot of different things. They've been turned into juices, wines, and one of the things about blueberries that's becoming more and more apparent is just how high they are in antioxidants. So while you're enjoying a, a delicious dessert like this, know also that you're actually keeping yourself healthy with a lot of immune-supporting antioxidants. At least that's my, uh, my rationale for eating that. I don't need a rationale. That is amazing. Mm. Um, we have made this at home with the cultivated blueberries. They're called the high bush blueberries. They're bigger. They're the size of a pea, maybe a little larger, a small grape. Whereas the blueberries, as you saw them, me picking them today, are quite small. But So you have to pick more of the smaller ones to get the same volume. But the flavor intensity is altogether different. There's much more concentrated flavor in the small wild berries. You've got to work more for them than you do for the cultivated ones, but it's worth it. And they're free, of course, because you just go out and pick them. Mm. Okay. If you haven't tried blueberry grump before, then this is something that you just have to do. Go out and find yourself some blueberries if they're growing in your area. If they're not, see if you can find some in the frozen food section of your local grocery store. Likely they'll come from Nova Scotia. Look around, see if you can find some from Nova Scotia. Try the recipes, and I mentioned I'll put the, the alternate recipes in the show notes below so that you can make a larger batch of it at home. I think you're going to be outstandingly surprised and pleased with what it tastes like and what it looks like and just the whole experience of the blueberry. I mean, just the aroma of these things cooking in the kitchen. I could get it here in the woods. It was just amazing. Another one of those classic Nova Scotia meals that I wanted to share with you. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you do something similar, if you would do something different, then please put them in the comments section below. Well, I sit here on this gorgeous, hot, sunny August day in Nova Scotia enjoying a dessert fit for a king. All right, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It will make all the difference. Bye for now.